Okay, to set up scanning, we go to the interval. Um, this is what we've got currently set up. We've got a number of options down the bottom here. We can select the source, which just leaves auto. Um, that's basically just going to be the number of sweeps that it will do uh, continually, one after the other, until it hits that sweep count. I can go to a manual one. Uh, which uh, is just driven off of the scan button. And we can go to trigger from external uh, with the triggering function behind. And then I can go on to on an alarm as well. So if one of the channels reached a certain value, I could get that to trigger the acquisition as well. Uh, but one I'm using is time at the moment. So the interval that we've set up uh, if we go to time there, again we can use the little arrows to set up whatever we want. Um, or we can use a little button to set up and then, so that's 30 seconds and it will do it 10 times is what it's currently set to. And to trigger it we'll just hit the scan button and that will start it triggering off. And, home. and then what we'll need to do is just turn our output on our generator, plug in our amplifiers. Just hit scan and just see what happens. So when you go around the scan so you can tell it's done first scan there and then it's counting down till the next scan. You can see that correctly. We've stayed on 0 0.8063 amps. It might be this meter can't respond quick enough. You see it change a little bit there. Yeah, something is happening when I'm using that current channel. The internal current channel to this is affecting the load. I'll see when it's out of circuit. It's still a little bit low, mind you. So we'll let it go through this scan, and then we'll uh, do some measurements and check what load there is there. Uh, so whilst you're doing that, you can go back to monitor size and temperature on the uh, amplifier itself. Spacer is a five degrees less by the looks of it. So that's the thermal drop across the mica washer, which is always bad at transferring temperatures. Oh well, no, what I was going to do, I was going to try and catch it with the uh, thermal imager as well one time. So it tells you it's stopped now. So what we can do, if we go back to view, just before we do that, there's all our readings. Let's see. Oh, okay, I've got to go the other way. So there you see all our readings, uh, date and time stamped. So um, once you've taken your readings, if you go to the view button, you can then view the last set of readings that it's saved. Um, I haven't tried this yet. When you do a new scan, you'll lose all of these. So what I'm going to try and do is uh, copy them to I have no idea it does this. There's all your readings. Um, oh, we have amp gain as well. Yeah, 401 channel in the middle there. It's got the amp gain of 1.977, so it records that as it's going through. And as we go through, you can see the, uh, so the amplifier started off at 37 uh, degrees and it ended up at. 42 degrees. Let me save. 
Manage file, so I locked it and I think that's save path internal file state one. Can we change to browse? Ooh. That's gonna be go to external select. Oh there we go. Readings, save readings, data one. Okay, separate as a comma. Oh, we can have a tab, I like a tab. Save readings. So let's save the data. Action, capture display. Screen one. Dot PNG. I'll do him as well. Zoom, that's captured the uh, this screen here. Okay, so we'll see how that comes out. Hopefully we'll be able to pull that data into Excel. But what we will do is we'll uh, swap over and get ready to do the higher current test. <laughs>